Hello everybody, Don't Blink here again with another Battlefield Bad Company 2 gameplay commentary for you guys. And today I am just narrowly avoiding ATVs and failing at getting kills with my XMA Compact. As you can see, I am playing Conquest on the Gunapressa using the Engineer Kit with, as I said before, the XMA Compact. And as you can see there, the anti-tank mines equipped. Got a nice little double kill on that Bradley, so I guess it's good that that ATV didn't actually run those over. Because uh, the Bradley is a higher priority target, in my opinion. And speaking of anti-tank mines, you don't see infantry getting taken out by them very often. But unfortunately, I uh, decided to run alongside that Bakcha, and it messed me up. <laughs> messed me up real good. Got myself killed by an anti-tank mine. Doesn't happen too often, but that's okay. Uh, sorry about the lack of uploads recently. I know I'm constantly saying that, and I feel like a broken record talking about how I, I like to upload more frequently. Uh, but it's true. I would like to upload more frequently, but I don't want to do so at the cost of quality, at the cost of uh, my integrity and all that stuff. So, you know, if I can't make my schedule, then I can't make my schedule, and hopefully you guys understand. Uh, to make matters worse, YouTube has been very uncooperative lately. Um, they've made it very well known via their Twitter accounts and blogs and stuff that, um, yes, they are aware there are problems on the uploading side of things here on YouTube, but because they're currently working on a number of uh, new systems or upgraded or improved systems, they're just not going to be fixing the current ones, which means we have some broken ass uploaders and, and other issues that are making it difficult to get videos out there to subscribers. So that's kind of unfortunate, um, but thankfully on the good side of things when it comes to uploading, I'm getting my internet service upgraded and I'm very excited for that. Um, my upload speed compared to my current DSL is literally going to improve by a factor of 10. So that's going to be awesome. I'm very, very excited to uh, speed up my upload speeds and get videos out to you guys more quickly. It means that, you know, if something really crazy happens in terms of video gaming news or if I'm playing a game and something really crazy happens, I can, you know, go make a video render it out and upload it to you guys much more quickly. Um, currently, the slowest or the biggest bottleneck for my uploading, I, I don't know, I guess you could call it workflow, would definitely have to be my upload speed. So uh, improving it by this amount is going to make things much easier and hopefully it will mean that uh, you guys will be kept in the loop on an even more timely basis. So. Anyway, that's enough about that. That's enough about the whole behind the scenes thing here on YouTube. What I really wanted to talk about today was Battlefield 3, as usual. I know it's the hot topic in the Battlefield community, obviously. But DICE just released their latest battle blog. And in it, they discussed weapon customization in Battlefield 3. And they already kind of talked about um, weapons themselves and what they're going for in terms of game design when it comes to the weapons in Battlefield 3, but they hadn't until this battle blog released publicly full information on the attachment system and the customization system for the weapons in the game. And this is one of the areas of Battlefield 3 that has me the most excited for the game, because I feel like uh, starting with Call of Duty 4, the weapon customization trend in first-person shooters is one of the biggest improvements to the genre in quite some time, and Battlefield 3 seems to have more weapon customization than just about any other mainstream shooter out there that I know of. So I'm um, definitely looking forward to getting my hands on the full game and, and trying out all the different attachments and stuff. DICE has confirmed that at least 50 weapons will be available in Battlefield 3. And I'm pretty sure that's just talking about the base game and not including the weapons that they've said they will release when they release back to Karkand, which is the 
downloadable content expansion pack similar to Battlefield Bad Company 2 Vietnam, at least in scope. So 50 weapons on day one. That's a lot of weapons. I think Bad Company 2 had something more around the lines of 30, but don't quote me on that. So that's a big increase. And to add to it, they are also increasing the amount of customization that you can uh, work with on a per weapon basis. So not only will you have your, you know, your specializations and your attachment like in Bad Company 2, each weapon is actually going to be able to have up to three attachments at any given time. And this is, this seems to have been taken from Medal of Honor. I don't know how many of you played that game, but in that game, the primary weapons um, were able to have up to three attachments. So it seems like they took a little bit from that game in designing Battlefield 3's customization system. But uh, in taking something from Battlefield Bad Company 2, they've also included soldier specializations, which they didn't talk about in the battle blog, but if you've seen the multiplayer fact sheet that was released at Gamescom, it does have a list of um, confirmed soldier specializations, and such specializations include things like ammo upgrades, so you can carry more ammo each time you spawn, and um, sprint speed upgrades, so you can sprint... Uh, at a faster speed and get to objectives and vehicles faster than your teammates and your enemies. So <clears throat> it's basically like they're combining the two systems from Medal of Honor and Bad Company 2. And it means that the number of customization options and total combinations of uh, customizations that you can have on your soldier is it's just going to be incredible. And I really think that it's going to add to the replay value of the game and hopefully add to the lifespan as well. Um, something else interesting that doesn't really affect how many attachments and how much customization is going to be in the game, but does affect the lifespan of the game, is that attachments are going to be unlocked on a per-weapon basis. Unlike Bad Company 2, where attachments were unlocked on a per-class basis. So, if you unlock, say, the Scar H and you want a red dot sight for it, you're going to have to work for it. You, you don't automatically get the red dot sight unlocked if you've played the engineer class a lot already. You're going to have to unlock each attachment um, on a per weapon basis and that means if you like one gun more than all the rest you can just uh, fully unlock all of the attachments for it and you can be done. <laughs> But on the other hand, you can, if you want to increase the amount of experience you're getting at any given time, you can jump from gun to gun and unlock each attachment as quickly as possible. So hopefully that means that um, we'll have a bit more replay value in the game. And based on the list of attachments that were in that fact sheet, there's going to be a lot of stuff to unlock. So. Uh, even if it were to have the same number of attachments and specializations as Bad Company 2, but you had to unlock it on a per-weapon basis, that would have added a lot of, of time, uh, total unlock time to the game. But now that there are going to be even more unlockables, it means that this game <laughs> seems like it's going to take forever to unlock everything, which I think is a good thing. And obviously each of the game's weapons will have unique base statistics. But uh, if you coordinate your attachments, you'll be able to shift a weapon's capabilities towards a certain style of play, and I know this is something that DICE is really pushing for, is uh, play it your way. So if you want a particular weapon um, to be more of a long-range weapon, then you can attach um, accessories that will give it better, better capabilities at longer ranges. So you can attach a heavy barrel and attach a bipod and a four-time scope. But if you want to do more close-quarters combat, you can attach a laser sight and a foregrip and a red dot sight. So um, I really think that the attachments are going to allow people to play just about any weapon any way they want and hopefully that will uh, result in people playing the game longer and keep the community alive. Uh, something else interesting that was confirmed via Twitter by Battlefield 3 senior gameplay designer Alan Kurtz is that different weapons will have different bullet velocities, meaning that they will drop different amounts at the same distance. This is different from what was seen in Battlefield Bad Company 2, 
since in that game all of the bullet firing weapons fired their bullets at the exact same speed. So I think that's really going to add to the amount of skill necessary to use a lot of the game's weapons. And um, again, it'll give you even more reasons to play, so hopefully uh, people will play even more and we'll have more servers to play on and all that good stuff. But that's it for the match. It was pretty exciting. It really came down to the wire. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the gameplay, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.